What is gonna be the best web framework of 2021? I've got a secret for you. We're gonna take a look at it in this video. Hello, hello YouTube. My name is Braden Gerard and welcome to another one of my YouTube videos. Today, we're gonna to be diving deep into SvelteKit. It's the framework that is yet to be released but is able to be played with today in some personal projects. Not recommended though for production use. But we're gonna take a look at how you can set it up, how you can start working with SvelteKit and why SvelteKit is gonna be the framework that allows you to do everything that many other frameworks do all in one. Like React, Vue, or Angular, these frameworks all have other frameworks built on top of them to do things like server-side rendering or to do things like static site generation. With SvelteKit, it's gonna be your all-in-one toolkit to just create components if you want or go as far as server-side rendering your full app stack with routing involved and everything else that you would need to build a large production application. I'm excited for SvelteKit. I can't wait for it to be released. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to get started with it and start learning it before it's even released. Let's dive in and take a look at the code. So for those of you who haven't heard of Svelte before, um, it is the cybernetically enhanced web apps framework. Um, so what does that mean? So Svelte, basically allows you to add functionality to your HTML and CSS without having to write a lot of vanilla JavaScript. Um, there's some basic examples here showing you how you can just add a script tag to your Svelte file, and then you add in some HTML, and you can add in some CSS below that in some style tags, and then you can just use this as a component and drop it into your HTML page. It's just like many of the other frameworks, like Vue or Angular or React, except that with Svelte, you're not actually packaging the framework up with your end product. The framework is more of a compiler than, than an actual framework. It just runs as a compiler, compiles everything into just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and then at the end of the day, that's all you're shipping. Now, Svelte has a current framework called Sapper that sort of organizes all of your code into routes and gives you a routing uh, functionality as well as some ways to compile your app for being server-side rendered. Now, Sapper worked well, but it was built a couple of years ago, and there's been a lot of advancements in JavaScript since then. So currently, the founder of this project, Svelte, is working on something called SvelteKit. Now, SvelteKit is rumored to be coming out in beta very soon, but it's not actually out in beta yet, but there is sort of a pre-beta version that we can try out. Now, it's breaking every day, so remember that if you're playing around with this. If we go to our recent blog post here, uh, I believe it was end of November time, they said, what's the deal with SvelteKit? And if you watch this whole video, Rich Harris, the founder of Svelte, will explain SvelteKit to you. Uh, this is a much more detailed video and it goes through everything. We're just gonna jump in and we're gonna look at getting it set up initially and I can quickly go through the project structure to show you how it works. So if we go down here on this article, you can see you can get started using npm in it. Let me just zoom in a bit here. So you can get started using npm in it and then svelte at next. Okay, once we run that, it's gonna generate that default project for us. It's gonna ask me if it's allowed to install create svelte. Sure, go ahead. Now there's this big warning, put on the brakes. Okay, you need to not use this for production yet. They're basically saying because everything is still breaking, they're currently developing it actively. Okay, that's fine, we just wanna try it out. So it's telling me that my directory is not empty. Do I wanna generate this? No, actually I don't. So first what you wanna do is create a folder. So make directory svelte kit test, uh, and then we'll go into that directory and then we'll run that command. So npm init svelte at next. Good, empty directory. Do you wanna use TypeScript in your components? So built-in TypeScript support, awesome. I'm not gonna use TypeScript. What kind of CSS compiler do you wanna use or just vanilla CSS? I wanna use vanilla CSS. And that's it, it's generated my project. So next steps, CD into the directory that you want to be working in and then NPM, uh, sorry, actually I'm already in the directory. Let's, yep, uh, no, I'm not actually. So CD into the Svelte kit test directory. Uh, if we do an ls, okay, perfect. I'm in there now. Um, so we're gonna do an npm install in that directory to install all of the package.json. Okay, there we go. We've installed everything in our package.json. And then we're gonna go npm run dev dash dash space dash dash open. 
to run our development server. And then that will run our development server. So here we have a SvelteKit app up and running and I can click this button and it counts. Okay, so there is how you get it running and you have this nice local development server. Now, if we open up the project in another tab here and I open up my Visual Studio Code, we can take a look at the project structure. So in the project, we have a dots felt folder. Okay. Um, and inside this folder, it just has some of the uh, components and, and stuff that gets generated for this um, Svelte kit. Now we don't need to worry about this uh, node modules. These are all of our node modules that get installed from our package.json uh, the source. So this is where you're going to be doing all of your actual programming and writing of code. And then we have the static directory, which is anything that just gets spit out directly in the root of the project and doesn't get rendered or compiled or anything like that. And then our git ignore, obviously, because we want to eventually make this a git repository and we don't want to be including stuff like our DS store on Mac, our node modules folder, the dots felt folder, the build folder or the functions folder. And then we also have our package.json, which has all of the stuff we're including here. So if we take a look, we can see that the dev dependencies, now notice these are all dev dependencies, nothing actually ships with your project. So we have this Svelte.js adapter node. Now that just allows us to run this uh, server side so that our pages are server side rendered. So they're rendered ahead of time. And when someone comes to visit our application, they're getting a fully rendered page statically sent down to them extremely quickly. Uh, Svelte.js kit, so that's what we're using right now to do our development. And that's where these script commands come from, Svelte kit dev, Svelte kit build, Svelte kit start. There's Svelte JS snowpack config. So there's a snowpack config for Svelte. Snowpack is a new uh, bundler that is extremely fast. It works with the new JavaScript modules so that it only recompiles what it needs to recompile. So your development reload times are going to be very quick and we'll see that in a second. Uh, it does use roll up under the hood whenever it needs to make a server side rendered build. Um, so that is still for production, uh, but the Snowpack team is actually working on doing server-side rendering so they can use Snowpack all the way through from development to production. And then the Svelte framework, of course. So that's everything that's in your package.json. Uh, you have a readme here just explaining a bit about the project. Uh, the Snowpack config, okay? So if you need to modify anything in your Snowpack config, which we're not gonna get into here, but you can do that here. And then the Svelte config. Now the Svelte config has one thing that you should pay attention to. It has this adapter node, okay? So this will allow our project to be server-side rendered. Now we can also change this to be adapter static. And what that will do is it will render our site so that all of the pages are statically rendered and, and then you don't have to run a node server. You can just put these up uh, in Netlify or on a uh, S3 bucket and you can serve it up just like a plain HTML, CSS, JavaScript website. So this is why I'm really excited about SvelteKit because SvelteKit allows us to do everything all in one. You can build a static website, so you can use it as a static site generator if you want, or you can build an application with dynamic pages uh, that are server side rendered and run a node server on your production server. Now, SvelteKit also allows you to do hybrid. So you can have some pages statically rendered and some pages that are dynamically rendered. So then the static rendered pages are always uh, generated and never need to be server side rendered. So they're extremely fast and can be hosted on uh, stuff like Netlify or S3 buckets. And then your other pages can be coming from a serverless framework that's serving them up. And those would be your dynamically rendered pages. So I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but that's the power of this felt kit and what they're promising it's gonna have. So you'll be able to do both static site generation and server-side rendering at the same time. So it's gonna be great because you can host your site statically with the power of serverless functions and provide an awesome web app, web app experience that uh, will be extremely cheap to host because you only pay for what you use as well as fast, performant, and secure. So it's gonna be great for a framework, especially if you're into building Jamstack style of applications. Okay, so a couple of things in source. So in source, we have our app.html. This is just a basic HTML page where our Svelte head gets added in and our Svelte body. So our code gets injected into these two spots for every page of our application. We have uh, this static folder, which I already talked about, which is just the stuff that goes straight to the root and doesn't get uh, compiled. 
Then we have two folders, our components. So these are your individual components that you would put into pages and then our routes. So if you're familiar with many routing frameworks, um, routes are basically uh, files that are your individual pages. Okay, so there's the index files felt, which is this main page here that we're seeing. It's got your script code, your main code, HTML, and then your styles, and then any of your imported components in the page. Uh, and then if you want to create other pages, it's as simple as creating a folder file directory structure. So I want to make an about page. I make an about folder inside of routes. If I wanted to make uh, that page, then I create an index.svelte inside of that about folder. And then I can simply just put some HTML here saying this is the about page. And I save that. And I come over here and I refresh. Well, actually, sorry, it's already refreshed because I'm using Snowpack and it's extremely fast. Um, and I can go to forward slash about. And now I have my about page. Okay, so you can see that we already have two different pages here uh, just by creating a couple different files. Okay, and then I can include obviously components into this about page if I want. And the way I would do that is by importing uh, the name of the component and then from this dollar sign components, which will go to the components folder and then the name of the component that I want to import. Now let's try changing something here and see how fast this hot reload works. Hello world, this is Braden's website. Look at that. Literally the second I hit save, I mean, you guys didn't see me hit save there. So let me, let me do it the old school way. We'll put some exclamation marks at the end here and we'll go up and we'll say file and watch this save bomb updated. That's extremely fast. That's insane. So this is awesome for development workflow. Uh, and it also will not change as the site gets larger. So you might be saying, well, it's a tiny site. Obviously it's going to re-render quickly. No, you could have thousands of pages and the way that this works is it only re-renders the page that you're currently working on. So amazing advancements, taking advantage of the JavaScript modules for this hot reloading with Snowpack and just an awesome setup here for creating apps, uh, web apps or statically rendered websites. I hope you guys are as excited about SvelteKit as I am. I cannot wait for it to come out. Uh, if you're new to Svelte or you don't know where to start, I would recommend going to the Svelte homepage and just get started learning Svelte. They have an awesome tutorial on Learn Svelte here. And you can go through step-by-step -step how to learn Svelte and with this interactive REPL here that you can write code in. Um, and, and that'll give you some great experience with Svelte so that when SvelteKit comes out, you're ready to go and build some awesome apps. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to leave a thumbs up on the video and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you wanna catch more of our future development tutorial videos that we're gonna be doing here. Thanks, have a great day.